In this video, I'll be covering what I would call the ultimate practice technique for the OSCP, but you can also apply this to anything, any challenge that's very hands-on in nature. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely stay tuned. Hey, what's up guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Now, before I dive into, you know, this ultimate practice technique for OSCP, I will say that a lot of you guys were probably going to be, you know, kind of skeptical of like, okay, I already knew this, or maybe it might seem a little bit too obvious to you. But before you really retort with that, ask yourself the question, are you actually doing this? Are you actually implementing this? And have you been, and if you are, have you been implementing it for an extended period of time? And if you have, then you're well on your path, I would say. Uh, it's not something that uh, can come to you overnight, even if you implement this for a week or two weeks or whatever. You need to do this over the long haul, especially when you're gearing up for the OSCP. But if you do, I can pretty much guarantee you, if you have the grit to stick with it and keep implementing this, you will be successful in whatever it is you're trying to do. So... Ultimately, what I'm talking about here is the practice where you are sort of throwing yourself into the deep end. Uh, for OSCP, what that looks like is you're going uh, after some CTFs, getting some hands-on practice without you know, reading guided walkthroughs or watching guide videos on it. So I'm talking about the type of practice where it's just you uh, versus the, the box you're trying to root and uh, either there's no walkthroughs available or you are refraining from spoiling it, you know, with the walkthroughs for yourself. You're really testing your methodology, right? And the important thing, right, with OSCP, they even say it in the slogan, try harder, right? The ultimate, the ultimate even benefit, I would say, of the OSCP is the mindset that it teaches you, ingrains in you that try harder mentality, of not just simply, you know, try harder, bro, or anything like that, but that mentality of, you know, sometimes, especially in real world scenarios, right, you're not going to know the answer immediately if there even is a way to hack the particular box you're up against. Maybe it's patched properly in the real world and things like that, and uh, there haven't been any mistakes made anywhere. Uh, but maybe there's a subtle vulnerability somewhere that you can find and you're not going to, it's not going to jump out at you. You're not going to have it right away. Well, if you have this mentality that OSCP is so good at training you to have, then you'll keep looking uh, into different areas and you'll potentially find that vulnerability. And that is really what separates the kind of next level guys in the space from the people that are, you know, more entry level. And so, when it comes to the OSCP exam, most certainly you will be kind of turned loose. You'll just have 24 hours and a handful of boxes that you need to root, and there will be no solution manual that you can just read or, or video that you can watch and follow step by step. You're kind of left to your own devices to put your methodology to the test and figure out how to root the boxes. So, wouldn't it make sense that you would also, when you're training for that, you would simulate that environment, right? You know, just like if your goal was to, I don't know, be a, you know, do a competitive mixed martial arts fight, right? You will definitely spend a lot of time, you know, drilling techniques and things like that, you know, running your drills, but you'll also most definitely be spending some time sparring, you know, simulating that environment of, of a fight, right? And so, you know, it would be kind of ridiculous to think that you would be able to do that just by, say, reading books and doing drills only. And, and so the, it does apply here as well, right? This is a very hands-on thing, rooting these boxes. Eventually, you know that you're going to be put in this situation where you're left to your own devices, hack, the, hack these boxes, and either pass or fail the exam, right? And so you definitely need to put yourself in that environment. That's obvious, right? But I think one of the issues is a lot of information out there will go either in one extreme or the other when it comes to this. Uh, so I just want to back up and say there is definitely a time and place for guided learning, right? 
especially when you're when you're just starting out and even from time to time you want to be doing guided learning as well because especially if you if you learn from someone who already has the skills you might see a different way of doing things a different methodology a different uh thought process right and that is a great supplement to help you you know, further refine your own methodology and improve your own skill set. So you do want to be doing these guided learnings, you know, watching, say, like Ipsex content, maybe my content, maybe whoever's content, right? And even looking at, at write-ups of the boxes sometimes. But of course, you need to balance this out with really going out and putting yourself, you know, into the deep end of the pool, if you will. And I would say when you're first starting out, you know, it, it's kind of ridiculous to think that you're just going to start out. And I mean, don't get me wrong. There are certain outliers that do this, but it's kind of ridiculous to just be like, throw yourself completely in the fire from day one and just try to hack the box with no, you know, understanding of anything. Right. So if you're really new to this, do some guided learnings or tutorials, if you will. But same as all the programmers would experience programmers would tell you don't get stuck in tutorial hell where you're just doing tutorials well don't get stuck in you know the guided learning hell of security where you're just constantly looking at write-ups all the time you got to put yourself in that simulated environment and really that's going to help train your methodology which is the most important thing when it comes to oscp it's a test of your methodology so if you have a very solid methodology and you're on point with that it's going to make it a lot easier uh, for you to avoid those rabbit holes, those infamous rabbit holes that people talk about on the OSCP. That's how you avoid them. You have very tight methodology. Uh, so pretty much anything that's thrown up against you, got your process that you can do, and you know based on the situation how to adjust your methodology. Oh, okay, well, you know, this box has this service running, so I know that I can look for this and this and this. Oh, this share is not writable. Like none of the shares are writable. Okay, let me pivot from looking into, you know, writable share stuff because I don't have write access. Instead, I'm going to look in this direction, right? And you just have a kind of methodology that is kind of dynamic. You can adapt it to different situations. But if you're constantly looking at write-ups and you're seeing the solutions, you're not, your, your brain's not actively working through that in real time. And so when you go into the environment of a test scenario, it's going to make it that much more uh, difficult, but you, you really just need the, the exposure, right? Get used to swimming in the pool without the floaties, right? Going back to the whole uh, deep end uh, analogy. But with that being said, don't be afraid to Google for stuff when you're doing this. Google is your friend and on the OSCP, they expect you just be Googling and Googling and Googling information, right? You don't have to know all of this and memorize it off the top of your head and you're not going to be able to because this space is so vast. But when you're Googling stuff, obviously, you know, just stay away from the, uh, the walkthroughs or write-ups when you're, when you're particularly practicing, uh, practicing for this purpose of, uh, you know, throwing yourself in the deep end, but by all means use Google and look things up when it comes to anything short of completely spoiling it for yourself, right? Uh, and so that's pretty much what I had for this video. This is something that I am going to be pivoting into more now as well as I'm starting to wrap up uh, Try Hack Me or as far as I wanted to go in Try Hack Me prior to my next attempt at the exam. So I'm going to be making this move a lot more to the, the deep end type of training where I'm going after boxes on the offensive security proving grounds and really just putting the methodology to the test and uh, sharpening up, getting ready for the next attempt. How is your attempt going? Let me know down in the comments section below. And to assist you with your attempt, definitely let me know if you have any suggestions for content on this channel. I like to make stuff that is very relevant to you guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button to help get this methodology, this sort of practice technique out to anyone else who might be going for a very hands-on challenge and might need a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra information to help them out along the way. So I will see you guys over in some additional videos I got for you on OSCP. If that is something you're interested in, I'll definitely see you over there and thanks for watching.